Well, today I'm with Jason Packer, who's the CEO of Hill and Marks, a distribution company in Amsterdam, New York. And uh, it's great to have you here, Jason. How, how are things going in New York these days? Jeff, thanks for having me. Uh, everything is as good as it possibly can be in upstate New York. Uh, Friday started our reopening in, uh, in many parts of upstate New York. So uh, I think a lot of people are uh, optimistic and excited for that to happen um, as slow as that as slow as that is and as hard as it's been I think we're all looking forward to it. Good deal. Well tell us a little bit about your company Hill and Marks, a little history. Our company is a 114 years old so um, in the early 1900s Mr. Hill and Mr. Marks, our company is Hill and Marks, um, they were partners in a uh, ice cream processing company that was Hill and Marks. And um, they sold the company to Seal Test, um, another ice cream processor, but much larger. Um, and then in the uh, mid 1940s, around 1947, my grandfather and his mother and my grandmother um, bought Hill and Marks. Um, his mother, uh, my great grandmother owned a company called Finkel Distributors, and she decided to open that company. And I'm sorry if I'm getting into a lot of detail here, but it's it's relevant. Um, she um, started this company because she didn't want to get into glove making. They lived in Gloversville, um, and her husband was a glove maker. And she said, "I want nothing to do with that. I want to be my own entrepreneur." And she got her two twin sons involved in this business peddling candy and tobacco mostly mostly uh candy at that time um so fast forward to world war ii they go off and they fight in the war my grandfather and his twin bro uh, brother they come back and she says my, my great grandmother i can't support all these families because by then it was four brothers um so she went and bought hill and marks there was another company in troy uh green island called westville candy company so um, so then there ended up being three companies in the family. Um, Hill and Marks was a candy and tobacco company. Um, we then uh, uh, changed and we became a food service, disposables, and cleaning and disinfection uh, and sand company. So um, my, my parents came into the business, uh, my uncle, and they, uh, they went out and they acquired several different companies uh, across the state. And uh, fast forward to, you know, the 2000s, they, um, they cover the entire state of New York. Uh, we manage uh, business uh, healthcare to building service contractors, retail, uh, restaurants, schools, universities, um, you name it, they have a bathroom, we service them in upstate New York. So, um, and then fast forward to today, we all are, are now a PPE distributor. Uh, we manage uh, uh, to, to service all of our customers and a, a range of brand new customers, um, those products, um, that breadth of product. And um, we do have hand sanitizer and disinfectants like we always had, uh, different, uh, different channels that we're getting the product from and same channels. Um, so that's our history in a nutshell. Well, cool story, uh, and I imagine you've seen some some ups and downs in distribution. Uh, tell us what you're doing now with Hill and Marks to compete. Uh, this pandemic has kind of tossed people into a, a weird position or situation, but what are you guys doing that, that might be unique to your company to compete? Well, I think the most important thing we focus on every day is the safety of our people. Um, as long as our people are healthy and uh, as long as our people are are feeling like they're being taken care of. That's the most important thing we wake up every day focused on. The second piece is, to your point, the financial stability of the company. So um, our focus is to, is to continue to find the products uh, that people need and the customers that need them. So, um, you know, if you were to look at our list of customers today, they're a little different than they were uh, pre-pandemic. Uh, quite a few in the uh, retail segment, um, some different building service contractors, some different healthcare accounts. And to pivot, what we've done is just, you know, done a really good job in sourcing products that are needed in the PPE, the 
disinfectants, the, um, some of those, those uh, guns that spray disinfectants. Uh, Clorox T360 is a, is a big uh, important resource that we've, uh, we've put out into the, um, to our customers. So, um, you know, the, the other segment is just bulk. We, we sell bulk toilet paper and paper towels, and that also is quite high in demand uh, across the spectrum from retail to, uh, to our, our typical government customers, our school customers, um, and, uh, and healthcare customers. If I'd known you had toilet paper, <laughs> <laughs> my wife and I, you know, typical consumers out trying to find uh, the simple things, we didn't hoard any, so I, I will say that uh, you know we we didn't do that. Uh, it was, but you know when you when you see something's missing off the shelf, it's a it's a reaction. You, you're like, you know, it's getting low. I've got to get it. So I imagine as a supplier, you have people asking you for things, maybe based on uh, there was a shortage. They might not have needed everything at that moment, but you know nobody wants to run out. Well, what we've seen, the way I explain it is when you went to your school or your gym or your restaurant, you were doing your business in those places, the bathroom, and now you're mainly doing it at many people, the people that are at home are doing, are doing that at home. So the supply chain has moved from the commercial side and, and school side and restaurant side over to the, to the, re, to the retail side and therefore into the household. So that's, I think that's where the supply chain has changed dramatically and we've been able to help support that supply chain through a lot of different relationships we've, we've had over the years. I mean, we have five different paper towel and toilet paper manufacturers that we support. Before uh, coronavirus, today we have about eight, nine now. Um, so it just you just keep sourcing and looking for different alternatives, so. Yeah, yeah, makes sense. Uh, so you mentioned, you know, people are, are at home more, so they're using more products at home. And your workforce, no doubt, was working from home for a period of time. You mentioned you're starting to open. How was that transition? Uh, what, what did you guys do to make that work? Uh, people from the office, now they're at home. Tell us about that. Right. So, um, so day one, when uh, it was actually a week before Governor Cuomo decided to start telling uh, businesses to close. Um, we started having a war room every day. And we met and we talked about what is what does this future look like? Um, and the very beginning was, okay, start thinking about how we're going to uh, get people to start working from home. Uh, what does it look like in the warehouse and in our trucking to make sure that they all stay safe from uh, disinfecting uh, the inside of the cab to uh, the, the forklifts and ha everybody having hand sanitizer. Um, and then early on sourcing masks and making sure that they had the proper PPE. So that was, even before the government had made that plan, we decided that we wanted to enforce our own plan because it was selfishly, if we don't have healthy workers, we don't have, a, we don't have an operation. So, um, so we started doing that. We uh, implemented something called soft phones and it allows for a, uh, a call to come into our building and then go back out to uh, somebody in their house. Um, so that started to really be uh, in place about a month ago. Um, so we gradually moved everybody out of the building. We still have uh, within our office about uh, four people um, to just man the, the, the office. We still have obviously our warehouse and our transportation working at high capacity every day. And, um, uh, you know, they have all the proper protection. Um, you know, we'll be implementing uh, per the state, you know, checking everybody's temperature every day when they walk in, a questionnaire every day when they walk in. Um, we'll slowly be bringing people back in. We're looking at uh, plexiglass uh, for the reception area. Uh, potentially, we have an open workspace, so we're looking at plexiglass to separate workers um, between each other. Um, and ultimately, if, you know, uh, all, we're looking at all the, all the proper um, channels to, to be safe. And most importantly, we're looking at uh, GBAC plus certification. Um, so we're, we apparently were the first distributor uh, to, to do that. And um, we are working with your team right now to, to implement that and make sure our cleaning and disinfection is 
education processes in place. Yeah, we appreciate that. It's a great partnership that's forming there with ISSA and Hill and Marks. So, uh, you know, it's, that's great. The um, working from home doesn't mean people weren't at your office or your building, obviously. You can't load a truck from home. So you had yeah. essential people there. Let's talk a bit about as the pandemic impact starts to fade, and hopefully it won't come back like it's here now, but as things get back to normal, what role will you folks play at Hill and Marks to help your customers reopen and get back to business? I would say um, in, in line with partnerships like ISSA, education, education, education. Uh, thankfully that ISSA has some really smart um, uh, people on staff who've been doing webinars with us uh, for all of our customers. Um, and we uh, were actually putting together a webinar uh, in conjunction with the Chambers of Commerce in Upstate New York uh, with ISSA to educate on how to properly reopen uh, with, with uh, proper cleanliness and disinfection. Um, so we're going to continue to do that. You know, how to open your restaurant properly, how to open your ice cream shop properly, how to open your school properly, how to open, and, and all those things we feel are very important. And then and then the second part is, you know, what we do best, which is find products and, and get them to you. Um, so we have been sourcing uh, with direct contacts in China uh, and other countries, domestically partnering with manufacturers. So um, our job is to really just find those products everybody needs right now. And we, we've been doing a, you know, a good job with it and we continue to, to work hard at it every day. Yeah, it's, it's good to see and hear. Um, we need people like you and your company uh, to provide those products. Last question is a little bit more on partnerships. Um, I know you guys have been supplying other stores or locations where people can buy products. Uh, you know, we, we, there's a hardware store in the Albany area that you partner with, maybe some others as well. How, did that, how does that develop? How do you uh, get into that? Um, I think each situation was a little bit different. Um, the, the hardware store you're, you're referencing, Phillips Hardware, that was through a network, through a, through a friendship. And um, so that, that happened in that way. Um, but other um, situations, purely just uh, the sales consultants reaching out to different uh, retailers, finding out uh, what their demands are and, and if we have the supply to meet that. So um, that's, that's basically how it, it not, not any fancy, uh, nothing more than that. Just a, just a lot of uh, reaching out to people and seeing what's going on in the marketplace and seeing if we can fill the void. Yeah, networking and, and conversations can make things happen. And I have to think that when an, a consumer goes into their hardware store or retail store and sees some of those professional products that you supply, it uh, might be a good thing for them. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, Jason, appreciate your time. Uh, keep up, keep doing what you're doing and get that place open 100%.